Hello, hello. My name is Aniruddha, and I would like to welcome you to this watercolor demonstration. Today, I am painting a rather interesting and challenging view. I am assuming that uh, the reference image, reference photo, was uh, shot from the first floor of a building. I absolutely love these just slightly elevated scenes. They make for really dynamic sketches. As I quite often do, I have started by putting down the color of the light. My color mixture is that of three primary colors: red, blue, and yellow. Biased significantly towards yellow. Again, another three pigment mix. This time, biased towards blue. In this first layer, I am going to try and cover the entire page with a light layer of paint. I am going to try and keep this layer connected so that there aren't any hard edges anywhere. I have noticed that the walls of those buildings on the right are uh, slightly more reddish so I'm going to push the red in that section within this first layer I do try to have a variation in the values that I put down on paper think of it as a family of values family of light values The tops of those rickshaws appear to be catching some light. So to further uh, depict that, I am coming in with a clean brush and lifting some of the paint in that area. I just noticed that the colors on my page are the three primaries. <laughs> That's rather interesting. I am adding more strength to the foreground part of those slanted roofs on the left, hoping to create a sense of depth. However, in hindsight, I feel that uh, this step was not necessary. My paper is still damp. I am going to make the most of it and put in those bright greens of the foliage. on the right and the left i can't stress how important it is to learn to mix your own greens it makes foliage appear a lot more natural I forgot to lift paint from the rickshaw on the left there. My page is still damp so I can do that quite easily. People are often concerned about uh, fixing mistakes in watercolor. Everyone thinks that it is rather difficult to do. However, as long as your layer of paint is still damp, mistakes can be fixed. I am fast approaching the danger zone where the paper will soon start to dry and I won't get smooth edges anymore. Before that happens I'm quickly going to put some color on those rickshaws.
so this first pass of paint is now almost done i am going to finish it off and then wait for it to dry i'm just adding some branches to those trees there notice how i hold my brush while uh, making these branches Now that the paint is dry, I will start adding my pen lines. To begin with, I am using a 0.6 fine liner. Very often, the scene you are sketching itself tells you what it wants, and this one doesn't seem to want a lot of line work. This time around, I am going to use my lines to. emphasize the geometry and form of all the elements within my scene i am also going to use my pen to uh, regain any lines that i may have lost in the first pass of paint my paper is still a little bit damp and my fine liner is refusing to flow at times like these gel pens are actually a better option i have now moved to my fude ink pen for some uh, dynamic strokes and variable line weight I will come back to this pen at the end of the sketch again. That's about enough lines for now. I am going to move to the next layer of paint. adding in the mid tones and the darks i'm working with my sketchbook at a slight tilt so at any given time my paint is always flowing downwards i am going to start this layer at the top and work my way to the bottom of the page I'm going to use the wet edge at the bottom of my shape to keep continuing it forward. I want my middle value areas to be connected as one or two large shapes. As I paint in the shadowy part of that rickshaw, I am mindful of uh, preserving its colors. At that spot there the shadow of the tree breaks the geometric edge of the roof shadow giving us a chance to have a little play Notice the colors that I'm using for the shadow area Shadows are never purely gray or black they always have faint color to them each time i go to my palette the color i am taking on my brush is slightly different so as to create variegation in my shadow invisible to us somewhere outside this scene there are uh, what appear to be lamp posts or electricity posts casting shadows adding them to this large shadow shape lends a sense of dynamism to the scene i 
I'm again going back to the top of my paper. This time working on the mid tones to the right of the scene. I occasionally come in with a clean brush and smooth in some of the edges, especially in the distance. I'm now painting what appear to be gunny bags. To be honest, it doesn't really matter what uh, those objects are. We just need to indicate that there is something there. <laughs> I'll now work on the shaded part of that uh, distant rickshaw. And I will connect its blue body to the shadow that it is casting. Notice the juxtaposition of the darker shadow and the bright top of the second rickshaw. The dark shadow makes the rickshaw top pop even more. The strokes I'm applying to those buildings on the right are directional in nature. I just want to indicate that there are doors and windows there and that is a vertical surface. At this stage in the painting, I am using my two smaller brushes, size 4 and size 8. All the materials that I use in this demonstration are listed in the description below. I've also made a video looking at all the materials I use when urban sketching. A link to that should be in the top right hand corner. As I move into the foreground of my painting, my values get a little bit darker and I'm okay with having sharper edges. I'm now putting in the shadow side of that building on the right. This will also pop the bright green tree further. We are now in the finishing stages of our watercolor sketch. I am looking over the painting to see if there are any parts that I missed out when connecting the large middle value shape. I am also adding in the darkest of darks. My food pen is helping me with that. It's also helping me add the further line weight where needed. These finishing touches are like icing on a cake. They can make a good sketch great, but they can't make a bad sketch good. There are two elements that I feel will really enhance this scene. First is that human figure there in the distance. 
he will give the scene a sense of scale and the second one will be those uh, electrical wires they will create a sense of depth and perspective for putting in the wires i am going to use my white jelly roll pen knowing when to stop is always tricky even when i stopped filming i added a few more touches thank you for joining me here today please remember to do all the youtube things like subscribe click the notification bell if you have any suggestions for uh, future demonstrations let me know down in the comments i will see you in the next one